Hi Lake Hazel, are you ready for your first math project? This one is all about the man who made parks. You should have received handouts in class on Wednesday telling you all about the project and what you were going to need to do over the next few weeks to create your own park. In preparation for that, we have this video reminding you how to do some of the key math components that you will need in order to complete this project. Sit back and remind yourself how area works and how to multiply a whole number by a fraction. And then get started on that project. We're looking forward to seeing the creative parks that you come up with. Let's review area. So the formula for area is area equals length times width. For example, if I have a sandbox that measures two feet by three feet, like my diagram below, and I need to find a cover that's going to cover the entire area of my sandbox, there's two ways I can find the total square feet that will cover. Notice in my diagram that I can um, break my two feet into one feet sections, and then my three feet into one feet sections, so I should have a total of three rows. Each one of these squares measures one square feet. And also notice there is one, two, three, four, five, six total squares. So the area that will cover my sandbox is a total of six square feet. And we don't forget our labels. Um, sometimes when we have a large space, counting up the squares is just too time consuming. I can always jump back to my formula to find a um, total square feet that covers my space. So for example, area equals length times width. Since I know my sandbox dimensions are two feet by three feet, I can substitute in those values into my formula. So area equals two feet times three feet. And then I'm gonna solve for the area. Well, two times three equals six. So the area is six feet squared. We don't forget our labels. Compare the two answers and the different labels. Square feet down below is the same as saying six feet squared. We just have labeled them a little differently. Also remember, jump back to your picture. We are multiplying. Notice that I have two columns with three squares each and that represents my six. Or I also have three rows with two squares each, which also equals six. This formula is going to be super important when we, um, when we are solving for our different areas in our park project. Okay, now let's talk about how to find a fraction of a whole number. So if I'm trying to find one-fourth of 20, this is going to be a multiplication problem. Anytime you see the word of, it's going to mean to multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my multiplication where that of is at. Since 20 is a whole number, I always put a 1 underneath of my 20. From here, there's two ways to solve this. We can either multiply straight across, since you do not need a common denominator for multiplication, or we can do cross-canceling. Let's go ahead and do both so you can see that it ends up with the same answer. So if I take 1 times 20, I'm going to get 20. If I take 4 times 1, I'm going to get 4. This is an improper fraction, and I know that I need to think how many times can 4 go into 20. 
4 can go into 25 times, and there's nothing left over. So our answer is just going to be the whole number of 5. Let's look at that same problem, and let's try our cross-canceling. So if I have 1 fourth of 20, I'm looking diagonally, and I'm asking myself, is there a number that can go into 4 and 20 evenly? I want to think of the biggest number possible so I don't have to continue to divide numbers. So I notice that 4 can go evenly into 4 and 20. So 4 can go into 4 once because 4 divided by 4 is 1. I'm going to go ahead and cross this off so I don't get confused later. I'm going to circle my 1 so I know what I'm multiplying at the end. Whatever I do to one diagonal, I have to do the same thing over here. So since I divided that one by 4, I have to divide this one by 4 as well. 20 divided by 4 is 5. I'm going to circle that and cross this off so I know what I'm going to be multiplying. So now I take my numerators, 1 times 5, which equals 5, and my denominators, 1 times 1, which equals 1. Anytime I have a number over a 1, I know that my answer is just that top number because it is representing a whole number. So my answer is going to be 5. So let's take a look at that same problem. 1 fourth of 20 and connect it back to our part project. So for example, if I have an area that measures 20 square feet, so for example, it's going to be 4 feet by 5 or 5. You'll notice there are a total of 20 squares because 4 times the 5 rows will give me my total squares of 20. And I want to know just what 1 fourth of, of that 20 is because, for example, maybe I'm only using that 1 fourth for walking paths or for a garden, but I need to know how much space I get to use. And I'm just going to divide my rectangular shape into one-fourth sections, and we're going to go in the same direction. I already had the four columns sectioned out. I want one-fourth of those, so I'll shade in one of the four strips and there is a total of five squares shaded in, which gets me back to my five feet squared. Sometimes, once again, counting up each one of those squares would take forever if you had, for example, 10,000 square feet to work with. So doing the math of 1 fourth times 20, which equals 5, is going to be a faster route to take.